the Tesla had their semi uh, delivery day, they call it. Yeah. So it's one of these things that is a Tesla event that you watch online if you're streaming. You watched, of course, yes. Tesla shareholder. You own 40% of the company, something like that. Something like that. It was interesting to me, you know, because I have such ill feelings about uh, Musk, but he was you know, not doing anything stupid until the show was over. And then he was on Twitter doing something stupid. But, I mean, he was uh, talking about the things that he, he he's on this earth to do, and that is to, to solve the um, emissions from transportation. It felt like an old-time Tesla event, you know? Like a, I had, you know, chills from it, you know? It's yeah. just like really cool stuff going on. So I'll just go over it for you and, and try to convince you why this is significant. So Tesla has made a 500-mile run in their semi-trailer that has fully loaded. It has a estimated 900 kilowatt hour battery, which is maybe nine times the biggest battery in cars or the bigger batteries in cars, not trucks, but cars. They tend to peak around 100 kilowatt hours, uh, maybe a bit more. So which would represent the top version of the truck expected to sell 180,000 to $200,000. Okay, this is a, a, a big rig semi-truck. A lot yeah. of people said this was impossible. This is why this particular thing is important because it yeah. was fully loaded. It did a 500 mile journey. It was only charged to 97%. It had a few percent left over. So there was some buffer in there. The point is they put a YouTube video of it up, the whole thing. So in case anyone doubted it, the driver took uh, something like a, one break to go to the bathroom, which is, you know, there was no charging along the way. So mm -hmm. all he did is do this with a full load, full semi load. And they did it. And, and, and um, you know, um, Bill Gates, other people like him have said, no, this is physically impossible. Um, Nikola, CEO, who's now in jail or whatever, charged, he said it was against yeah. physics. So a lot of people said this was not possible. And a lot of the other truck makers were saying it was not possible. They did it. And they did it with the things that you like to talk about, the efficiency of their motors and inverters and things like that. They also did it with aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a very mm -hmm. aerodynamic um, rig. And they also use, it's important to note, their own um, designed uh, trailer. So the trailer has to go with it. Okay. So it's probably a little bit lighter, yeah. but it's also a complement to the aerodynamics of the track. The mm -hmm. key unknown is how much the Tesla Semi itself weighs. We don't know that yet but it must be subtracted from the maximum 82,000 82, uh, pound gross weight of truck and trailer to get a total payload that the semi could pull for. If you're an investor, you want to know that number. And for comparison, some of the other people who are making these electric uh, big rigs, um, VNR has uh, 275 miles, and Freightliner has a model that offers 230 miles, which is less than half. And the Nikola TRE boasts 330 miles of range. So these there are other electric things out there. BY, BY, BYD has one. The Chinese uh, automaker has uh -huh. one that has been operating at ports in the west coast of North America for, you know, grocery stores, short haul trips, stuff like that. So 500 miles fits pretty nicely with a time at which drivers are mandated to take a 30 minute break after eight hours of driving, creating a natural time to charge. A uh, seventy percent charge is set to take thirty minutes. Yeah, the only issue right now is not enough charging stations. So, is there going to be a charger at that exact point where you're supposed to take your thirty minute break? And I think at this point the answer is no. But obviously this is early days, and this whole charging infrastructure. Will now get they are out. manufacturing these. Finally, they're what two, three years late, three years late, something like that. And yep, they are making late. them. So they're rolling off the assembly line and getting delivered to Pepsi and Frito-Lay. I saw a Bloomberg um, opinion piece, which had originally uh, said this was not possible, saying, well, they're, they're doing potato chips, and that's good. It's good, because there's lots of things that you can do that are light. Not everything's <laughs> heavy. But they pulled a full load in that video, so I don't know. The point is, though, that the people who are buying these are having scheduled loads that go from A to B. They know... The destination, it's, it's, you know, Budweiser Brewery to distribu Distribution Center yep. A. That's the, you know, they know how long it is. They mm -hmm. know how many trips they make. And they're doing that and they're going to save money doing it. And they're going to test it and they'll give lots of data back. Uh, the great thing about these semis is that they're using the electric motors from the Plaid, the performance version of the Model S sedan. 
So they, they didn't invent anything new. They just put three motors in there that, that they already <laughs> had, which were already efficient. <laughs> and what I found interesting as kind yeah. of a you know, techno geek is that uh, they've geared the one motor to work uh, at highway speed for efficiency. You know, like you have a first gear, you wouldn't drive in first gear if you had a manual transmission on the highway. Yeah. You drive in fifth gear. Well, what this is, yeah. is basically like fifth gear. So the the motor doesn't have to run yeah. at a high RPM. It runs at a low, but you have less torque there. But because they're electric motors, it still has plenty of torque. So when it needs yeah. torque, when it needs to go from standstill to driving or up a grade, uh, it will employ two more motors, which seamlessly take over without a drop off of the torque because it's an electric motor, they can seamlessly take over and add to it. And apparently it's uh, significantly more powerful than uh, diesel. Okay. So this is, you know, yeah. right now, if you're a person who drives diesel, you want to drive one. Plus it's easy because there's no gears in it. Uh, there's, I don't know how yeah. many gears there is in a semi. Okay. I'm a bit naive about that, but there's no gears in this, yeah. right? So anybody can drive it. Well, I guess there's technically gears as you're describing them, but right. it drives like you an automatic You don't have to car. change anything. So in that sense, that's the yeah. hardest part of driving a semi aside from getting around corners. That's, you know, half the battle and the other half is the gears. Yeah. So you still have to get around those corners and, and understand how to, to drive a trailer in that way. But, uh, it's just, it seems like. You know, like this is a just really good technology that will improve. They call it a step change in in uh, big rigs. So each motor has the same as it has a plaid. It can go to zero to sixty in twenty seconds, which is not impressive. But from a truck that weighs seventeen times as much as a, a full on electric car, that's pretty good. It's aimed at efficiency, not performance, too. And big rigs, as they pointed out in the presentation, are just one percent of vehicles on U.S. roads, but account for one fifth of the vehicle emissions, and you know, thirty six percent of the particulate emissions, which is uh, that's according to Tesla. Particulate emissions is the type that causes smog in cities and bad air quality around highways. If you, they pointed out that if you live near a highway, the future is looking good for you once we get to, you know get diesel off the road. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. And also, you know, there's a forty thousand dollar tax credit coming for large electric trucks. So that's going to make the uh, economics case pretty, pretty incredible. So, you know, they're going to ramp up to, I don't know, 50,000 a year in a few years, mm -hmm. 125 or so. But for now, they're going to get out there. The the big companies that, that haul a lot of stuff, the grocery stores, Loblaws in Canada is doing it, Budweiser, uh, Frito-Lay, PepsiCo, and, and Coke. And they're all going to use these and give feedback from their workers, from the truck drivers, and from just the logistics of it, and they'll put chargers in hopefully at their freight locations, at their warehouses. So if once you stop, you charge it, you plug it in, unload the vehicle, and then go on your way next time. So, yeah, that's just very interesting. Yeah, it'll take them a while to ramp up, and I think, like, they're planning to make 50,000 of them in 2024, I think. So throughout the next year, they'll be kind of ramping up their production. So... Uh, we always wish these things would go faster, but if we think of that five-year timeline that we were just talking about from the IEA, all the new clean grid energy that's going to come online in the next five years, there'll be a significant number of these electric semis on the roads uh, five years from now. And they have, you know, like all electric trucks, they will have um, sort of instant uh, access to the computer. Like they'll be able to adjust the wheels instantly, unlike... Yeah. with a transmissioned vehicle, like a diesel vehicle. And they say that they'll be able to reduce uh, jackknifing, which yeah. is something we see in a winter climate here yep. all the time. It shuts down highways. I saw one just a week ago on my drive to Moose Jaw, and there was a semi-trailer. I mean, I didn't see it go in, but there was a semi-trailer on its side in the ditch between the two highways. And, uh, you know, it was just a little windy and a little icy, and you're done. So I look at the the road report for the area when it's uh, when there's a winter storm, and there's all these little demarcations like, you know, jackknife semis uh, use alternate route. And, yeah. Because you know, they're blocking the road and, yeah. and they, you can't get them out. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they cause pileups. So hopefully that will, be, it will you know, trucks are, are dangerous on the highway. Hopefully this gets made safer. 
There was no talk, by the way, of uh, automation for driving or, you know, autopilot or anything like that yet. We'll see what's, yeah. what's coming with that. Yeah, and of course, we didn't get quite enough information about it, but the charging infrastructure, so this is supposed to charge at uh, up to one megawatt, which is... Yeah, this is something we've been speculating on yeah. the whole time of the podcast, right? So this is one four, megawatt is four times as much juice as the typical uh, 250 kilowatt Tesla charger. And they revealed that the Cybertruck is going to use the same in, in you know, uh, guts. So it could potentially charge up to one megawatt with a 1,000 volt architecture. So, yeah, this is the next version of the, the fast charging from, from Tesla. And uh, I, I want to hear more about it, but, uh, yeah, it sounds great. It's very interesting. Yeah, we, we sort of get frustratingly little details. They just put out nuggets kind of awkwardly and... Yeah. Uh, we have to sort of uh, wait for them to be filled in from a tweet, yeah. usually. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be incredible. And the Cybertruck, as a fleet, as a company, 202, like the pickup truck, if you can charge that, that's going to open up a more use patterns for it if it can charge at one megawatt, because that will fill up pretty fast. And, you know, the connectors, we were talking about how the rest of the auto industry uh, settled on a megawatt connector for trucks, but it's big. Mm-hmm. The Tesla one, Brian, is not. Mm -hmm. It is impossibly small, I would say. Yeah. And they've it's got water right into the cables, apparently, to cool them. Like water circulates right through the copper. Although, again, I wasn't quite clear if this was a new connector for the semi. They, I believe it is. It, yeah. So it is a, a larger connector than the other one, I think. But they've also referred to it as version four. Yeah. So you'd have to wonder if that's coming to other cars, like if... Uh, you know, a, a Model S two years from now might have this as well. We don't know, but like, it, yeah. it could be, yeah. which would make it very interesting. And, te and Tesla would have a big uh, advantage. Well, we picked a good time to make a podcast about clean energy and transportation because there's just uh, tons of exciting stuff going on.